<laughs> and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan take we are of course broadcasting live straight out of stockholm sweden and i do the show each and every day at 8 a.m central european summertime guys and today we will discuss something very significant because we have so many different topics number one we will talk about the dip many people are wondering about the dip whether it is time to get into the market whether it's time to double down into bitcoin and altcoin positions and in many ways it is a wrong question to ask and we're going to discuss why that is why you should never really be asking whether you should buy the dip because there is always a dip there could be a dip a small rebound and then we're going down and then there's another dip a small rebound so all in all buying the dip is actually a bad strategy overall we're going to discuss why that is and really where is bitcoin going from now where are we heading and what is the next step so that is going to be the first topic number two we're going to discuss manipulation because forbes actually published a whole article about bitcoin manipulation recently and it is quite significant because obviously this is something that we've been discussing for many years, even since Bitcoin really became a thing, even since Bitcoin really became this asset that many people on the internet started to get interested in and many people started trading, we have been discussing manipulation in one way or another. And now we do see Forbes coming out with an article basically talking about futures and how they are highly uh, connected to manipulation. Then we're going to discuss Trump, Mr. Donald Trump, the president of United States, the POTUS. So the POTUS is now under attack. People really want to impeach him. And now it seems to be serious as they have officially uh, proceeded into the impeachment um, process. And obviously, in one way or another, it will affect Bitcoin. I mean, believe it or not, <laughs> but we are connected to the traditional finance industry. And there are some correlations between S&P 500 and the price of Bitcoin that I want to discuss with you today. There is some data indicating that they might actually be correlated. And obviously, if the president is impeached, who knows what will happen to the markets, really? Who knows? Because the markets have really been this thing that Donald Trump is very proud of. And really, really, he tried to pump it up as much as possible, yelling at Fed to decrease interest rates. So it's going to be extremely interesting to follow. And we're going to discuss that. And then finally, we do have repo markets. Basically, the interest rate which banks use in order to borrow money from each other. We did see it spike recently. And uh, it has stabilized now, but it's also important to discuss how fragile this whole system is so guys we have so many topics i want to welcome everyone in the chat welcome everyone we do see max we do see typhoon vfu berlick michael gulp simply me um max x glenn fraser everyone very very welcome tom cat chris martin chris hemskirk i do recognize a lot of names number one be sure to smash that like number two be sure to smash that bell button and number three guys let me know what you're drinking because today we're drinking black coffee no milk no sugar involved as always looking at the markets it is sideways it is uh, once again in this in this period of sideways movement but it is also in one way needed we do need some side sideways movement now after the events of yesterday and the day before that so 0 0.1 uh, 0.97 percent in uh, bitcoin we do see ethereum at 0 0.48 ripple two percent up very good uh nothing really has happened in the top 10 except stellar which is six percent gain congratulations to you but uh, uh, yeah at the same time it's six percent up but we have decreased a lot uh, overall when you look at the whole market now looking at the big winners abbc coin no comment once again pumper and dumper number one in this world xmax 20 percent faccom 17 percent so we do see some significant gainers even today and the biggest loser is aurora algorand which has really really suffered a lot since their launch because the vcs have been dumping allegedly allegedly the vcs are dumping algorand uh you see icon four percent minus and red coin four percent as well and then some other minor 
coins. Also guys, please don't forget, there are only a few days left in September, and you know that we have our collaboration with Bybit, so that if you sign up using the link below, you get $110 for free to try this platform out. You can do Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, XRP trading, you can do long, you can do short, you can also use leverage if you are uh, skilled enough, be careful with leverage, but you can use it on Bybit, so definitely check it out in the description before September is, is out, because when it runs out of days, September is no longer here, this discount will no longer be there. And also, another thing is that we have launched our new Academy platform. Basically, we moved all courses, we moved everything to the new one. Everyone who is in the Academy should have released, uh, received an email about it. We do have, um, now, instead of just courses, we do have tracks, because we, do, uh, we had so many courses that people didn't really understand where to start. You just enter the Academy and then you have a million courses uh, uh, on a page. Now we've organized them in to track so it's way easier to know where you're where you're starting and what is the next step so this is just an announcement for everyone in the academy do not be scared if you don't recognize it because it's a whole other platform and as we write here you will get new login uh, details so if you don't get new login details just email support at ivan.academy now, guys, let's talk about the topics. Let's talk about whether you should buy the dip, whether uh, whether I should buy the dip or anyone at all should really care about the dip right now. And the situation is very, very interesting. Many people are worried that we're going to go lower. So unfortunately, this is the human psyche that I want to highlight, the element of the human psyche that I want to highlight. Whenever people see Bitcoin price rising, it is very, very difficult for them to understand that, uh, you know, they have not missed their chance. Many people say that, hey, I've missed my chance in Bitcoin. It is now rising so much, so I will not invest. Or they invest at the top. It really takes time for them to get convinced. They see Bitcoin rising, rising, rising and rising. They finally buy. They finally buy. And that's when we start going down. We, now that we have gone down, basically 40% since our peak at 14, uh, $14,000 dollars which we reached in June approximately uh, during the summer, now is the perfect opportunity for many people to actually enter. But obviously, now is the situation that you don't really know whether we're going to continue to go down or not. So even when Bitcoin is at a discount, not many people take action and basically they just sit on the sidelines until we start once again going up, up, up. They will not be convinced. We continue going up, up, up. Then they will get convinced and then we have another correction down. So this is how most people operate. Operate. And unfortunately, this is also how most people lose money. If you look at the number of people that got involved in crypto in 2017, most of them did this strategy. Basically, they were like, I'm afraid I'm going to lose money because it has already gone up so much. And then it continues to go up. Then they get convinced and yeah, and then we go down <laughs> basically at the last moment in time. At the same time, it is also very difficult to buy right now because we have collapsed. Who knows? We might continue collapsing. We might continue going down. So psychologically, it's very difficult. And I do understand why many people miss out on the discounts. And therefore, I just once again want you to understand the importance of dollar cost averaging. I know I'm saying it every day, but it is the best strategy according to me, not financial advice, but it is the best one. Because whether we're going up or down, you're just putting small bets into the market, not thinking of yourself as mega trader or someone who can really guess and, and perfectly guess the top or the bottom, where to short and where to go long all in. Instead, you're saying, hey, I'm not an Einstein. I'm just going to do the simple strategy of averaging out. But there is an important variable when you do dollar cost averaging, obviously you need to have a time perspective. You need to have a time horizon because at the end of the day, you don't know how long we're going to go down or up. So really, this is very personal and it, it will be different for different people. But basically, the best strategy is to divide your capital into, into portions depending on when you think is your time horizon. If you have, let's say, let's say you have $10,000 in a year, you need to ask yourself approximately where do I believe Bitcoin is going to be in one year, in five years, in 10 years, and then divide according to that understanding and then take small bets all the time no matter whether we're up or down because honestly you will not be able to guess perfectly and if you do not have a strategy such as DCA then you will only buy at the worst times because your emotions will not allow you to buy at good times and then when there are bad times coming only then you will get convinced to buy and then we collapse this is how most people do it by the way <laughs> and this is why most people lose money another important thing is this 
uh, whether we are connected to the stock market or not. I mean, ideally, ideally, we don't want to be connected to the stock market. Ideally, Bitcoin should be completely on its own. Ideally, it should be uncorrelated because otherwise it is not this asset class that really makes sense to have in, um, in, in a portfolio of a normal, of an average asset manager. Because asset managers and wealth managers, obviously they need diversified portfolio. So if they can find an asset that is not correlated with everything else, uh, well, that, then it's good for them. But if it is the case that Bitcoin is correlated with everything else, well, then it doesn't really make sense. But the only thing that we know that they are not really thinking about is, of course, the aspect of digital gold and the fact that all fiat goes to zero. But if you talk to like normal asset managers, they're not really thinking in those terms. So yes, although you and I understand that Bitcoin is digital gold, it's valuable for the long term, this is not something that most people discuss when you look at normal traders in the traditional markets and normal uh, asset and wealth managers. And so Thomas Lee basically tweeted this, you know, Thomas Lee, the never-ending bull, but now he's a bit bearish because <laughs> basically he created this chart and uh, this is the correlation between the Bitcoin annual performance on the on the y-axis right here and then you do see S&P 500 annual performance on the x-axis and basically he draws this trend line uh, which correlates the S&P 500 to BTC performance basically the higher we are on the x-axis the higher we are on the y-axis so this is when what we mean when we say that potentially these two asset classes are correlated basically equities and Bitcoin. Because uh, this chart clearly shows you that when we do see very high returns in stocks, we also do see very high returns in Bitcoin. Now, whether it's true or not, it's still too early to say. I mean, this data suggests, it suggests that there might be something there. But at the same time, for all of you who have studied, uh, even in high school or even in university, you understand that the sample size of this is very small. The sample size and really the amount of data you have to draw conclusions is not there. The amount of data we need to draw conclusions, such as this one, the fact that S&P 500 and Bitcoin are correlated, positively correlated, we don't have that data yet, according to me. For example, we have never seen a real recession happening. We have never seen Bitcoin truly perform in a real recession and truly show what kind of, uh, of return it can give in a real recession or how it will really correlate with the stock market. So really, we need way more data to draw any conclusions. But nonetheless, there are some indicators that it might be the case that they are correlated, which means that news such as this one, where Trump is potentially being impeached, who really knows if this is happened or not, Personally, I, I don't know if I believe it will happen or not because they've been trying with this since 2017. They, they're trying it over and over again and they're really failing all the time. But it seems that now it is getting a bit more serious. Now it is getting a bit more official and a bit more uh, more um, they have come the, the furthest right now with the impeachment and for all of you who don't know basically according to this um, to this uh, impeachment process which is still not released to the public it will be released in the near future i guess uh, the complaint that is the official complaint still not released to the public but according to the complaint uh, that that that, that people are talking about, but we still don't have the real text. According to it, uh, on the 25th of July, President Trump called the Ukrainian president, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, and basically asked him to look into corruption claims involving the son of Joe Biden. And you know that Joe Biden is his rival in the coming election. So here is where People are saying, hey, this is not okay. You know, is it really good for President Trump to do it? Is it according to the constitution, this and that? Uh, I mean, obviously we don't know what really happened. Nobody knows, except for the whistleblower that really reported this and who knows how trustworthy it is, but it's not really, I don't want to discuss whether it's true or not, whether he's gonna be impeached or not. I'm just saying that it's another variable that you and I need to keep in mind. It's another variable that will affect crypto markets if it is the case that we are correlated with the equities market, because no doubt this is going to affect the equities market. So therefore, you cannot really be this guru and, and pick the perfect dip and pick the perfect bottom. And you cannot be this guru and pick the perfect top and short it 
to the bottom. It's very, very difficult. So most people are not that smart. Most people do not have the possibility to even do something like that because there are so many unknowns. There is also, of course, the allegation of manipulation. So as um, Forbes writes in this article, let me show you, uh, striking Bitcoin market manipulation warning issued. And basically they are referring to a research that actually took a look at the data. You know that since 2017, we have had the CME futures and there were a lot of talk about whether uh, people are trying to manipulate the price of Bitcoin to gain an advantage when it comes to CME futures, basically to make money using CME futures and at the same time manipulating Bitcoin. So there were all, always these um, accusations. But once again, we did not really have enough data to draw any conclusions. But now it's been almost two years since they launched the CME futures. And now we can start drawing some conclusions. Still, it's too early, but we can draw some conclusions when it comes to whether CME futures are being manipulated or not. And basically what they are saying is the following. Uh, adjusting for large outliers, researchers found the average price movement up to 0.04%. And this is for periods that uh, that are normal for Bitcoin. So you basically have the average price movement of 0.04% in Bitcoin normally. While for the period right before the CME Bitcoin future contracts are settled, the price falls by 1.99% on average. So basically now they can clearly make a conclusion uh, based on the two years of CME future contracts, they have been running for two years, that yes, there is a deviation. And statistically, this deviation is unlikely. So statistically, it is highly unlikely that the price falls in advance of CME settlement uh, just by coincidence, just by mere coincidence, because it doesn't happen in other futures markets. And so this is another variable that you and I do not really have control over. So when you're asking, should I buy the dip is the dip here or is the dip there? Is the top here or there? I mean, you cannot really guess it at the end of the day. You, the probabilities are not really on your side. And yes, you could try to increase your probabilities using technical analysis. Maybe it will help you increase your probabilities a bit. But at the end of the day, it is also not something that most people are good at. Unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, it's not something that most people are good at. Most people are just following some, some YouTube or some, you know, a trading view chart and basically outsource outsource uh, uh, technical analysis to someone else. And so while it is possible that you could, I mean, you could increase your chances with technical analysis, considering all other variables that you don't really have control over and you don't really know how they're going to turn out, such as, you know, Trump impeachment, such as this, whether we're correlated or not, or not such as manipulation, you really don't have the stacks uh, stacked in your favor, the cards stacked in your favor. And this is, I think, clearly seen on TradingView. When you log into TradingView, you realize that, I mean, as soon as we do, we are bullish, as soon as the price increases, now all the charts are bullish, like everyone's charts are bullish. Now that we've gone down, suddenly all charts are bearish. Like you realize that this is, this is herd mentality. This is herd mentality and herd psychology. So all in all, DCA baby, as I always tell you guys, this is the only strategy that is viable long term, although of course not financial advice. The only variable you need to figure out yourself is your time horizon. I mean, how long are you going to DCA for? Because obviously you could DCA for one week. You just divide your capital into seven and you invest seven days. But is it smart? Probably not. Probably you need to have a bit longer. But it all depends on how much capital you have and really what your goal is. Are you planning to uh, have a major exposure to crypto or just a small one? And what is your time horizon? I mean, are you a, 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 a are you 50 years old and you're gonna go to pension very soon? Well, then your time horizon is different compared to someone who is just 20 years old. So this is a bit personal variable that you need to pick for yourself. But all in all, guys, I hope you understand that when people ask, should I buy the dip? It's kind of a wrong question because you don't really know where the dip is. It, this could be the dip, but it could also be uh, be just a small break on the way down even more. So all in all, believe in the long term, think about long term, do not care about the dip that much, to be honest with you. But obviously, it's better to buy now uh, compared to when we're just going up and up and up and you're just seeing the price rising and then you finally get convinced and then you buy at the top and we start going down again. Also, guys, I'm going to Korea. I'm going to Korea 
today. So this is another important news. I'm going to say hi to Mr. Uh, Rocket Man. Uh, but yeah, of course, it is not that Korea. It is this Korea. I'm going to South Korea for Korean Blockchain Week. So let me know, guys, if you are there, if you live in Korea, or if you're going to be at Korea Blockchain Week, please contact me at contact at ivanontech.com so my email is contact at ivanontech.com so contact me we're gonna meet in korea and also of course for all of you guys watching we're not gonna have the normal upload uh, schedule so i'm gonna be in a whole different time zone and i'm gonna try to do as much content as possible but also i don't think it will be possible to do every day so just a heads up just a heads up and um, uh, i will be posting but next friday i will be home so then we're gonna have the weekend and then monday after next week so no, not next monday but the monday let's see the Monday, the 6th of October, everything is going to go back to normal. So just a heads up. And yeah, if you see somebody asking like when I'm gone, where is Ivan? Where is Good Morning Crypto? Where is where is the channel? Just write to them. Ivan is in Korea and he will be back on 6th of October. Uh, but yeah, during this week, I will also be publishing, but not the normal times. Just so you know, just so you know. Okay, we've covered a lot of things. The final thing I want to cover is this. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, it's just a fun tweet. Do not get upset. Do not get triggered. But this is Ethereum Killer Awards. So Polkadot gets the award for most jealous. <laughs> I think this is so funny. Also, Cardano gets, gets the award for the best travel. You know, Charles Hoskinson is always traveling. He's always posting selfies like on an airport or somewhere else in some other country. He's always traveling. So the Ethereum killer Cardano gets the award for best travel, but also fewest commits. <laughs> Algorand gets the award for best VC dump. And yes, we have seen a VC dump in Algorand. If you see, if you look at the charts, it's not looking that good. It's not looking that good um, since they since they launched. Yeah, it's just been uh, going down. Then you also see uh, such a, things such as Tezos, most lawsuits. You know that Tezos really had such a bad start, such a bad start with uh, the whole foundation uh, crisis. That the guy who was really in the charge of the foundation turned against the founders, and they had this legal issue. And yeah, and then you have EOS, best colluding BPs, but guys, don't, don't get triggered, this is a joke. Like, if you hold the hash graph for EOS or something else, do not get triggered, okay, it's just a joke. You know, in, in crypto, you there are many jokes in crypto, but also there are many triggered people because they have money invested. So when I call their investment most jealous and you're sitting with bags and bags of polka dot, I mean, obviously you're gonna get triggered. Or if you're sitting with bags of Tezos and I tell you it's the most lawsuit uh, the coin Ethereum, in the Ethereum killer award, then you're also gonna get triggered. But actually this was not the last, the last thing. The last thing is this, it's about repo. It's about the fact that uh, repo rates are extremely high. Basically, repo rates is uh, when banks borrow money from each other. Sometimes the bank needs money very, very fast and they don't have cash. They don't have cash on hand. So basically what they do is that they do these repurchasing agreements. These repurchasing agreements are usually overnight. So if I'm a bank, I need cash as soon as possible. I usually have some kind of security. I, I might have some debt, for example. I might have a treasury. So there's another bank that has cash. I give them treasury, they give me cash. Basically, I take out a loan and I use my treasury as a collateral so that the other bank knows that I'm not going to go bankrupt completely. They have some security, they have some collateral, and I get my cash and I can use it. And then the next day in the morning, I just return them the cash, they return me my, my uh, treasury, and that's it. And we have done this, uh, this deal, and it's over. The rep repurchasing agreement is closed. So, I mean, these kinds of deals happen all the time. They are very, very important. And what is interesting now is that, you know, these rates have really skyrocketed. The past week, the interest rate for doing such a loan, where I get cash from a bank, like I'm a bank myself, but I get cash from another bank and I give them a treasury as, um, as collateral. Now it is basically 10%. I mean, the past week I, I had to pay 10% interest on this. Obviously, it's a, it is a very high interest rate, especially especially thinking about the fact that 
I'm actually giving them a very safe security. I mean, they have a security in the loan because I'm giving them a treasury. And obviously, a treasury bond is very secure from the, from the traditional point of view. It should be seen as secure. But still, the demand for cash is so high. It is so damn, damn high when it comes to banks. And really, there's not a lot of liquidity. The whole market is dry when it comes to cash. So banks really, really need cash as soon as possible. And they drive up these interest rates like crazy so now it's 10 percent although although these loans are very very low risk they are very low risk because they're actually getting a collateral that is seen traditionally seen as very safe and those are the treasury bonds so basically this article also from forbes talks about this fact the fact that you know somebody probably a big bank needs cash so badly that it has been willing to pay a shockingly high cost to obtain it and interest rates have betrayed common sense interest rates in the repo market and repo market are basically this overnight loans uh, they should be lower than rates in unsecured markets because repos are secured by assets and thus supposedly lower risk. So this is what I told you, because normally if I'm a bank, I will give a collateral, for example, a treasury bond. Uh, and all in all, we're seeing 10% interest rates. And this just shows you how fragile everything is. I mean, the whole system is so fragile. And basically, if you read this article, I will post it in the, uh, in the chat right now. You will basically read about the fact that this whole market is very fragile. I mean, the current the current uh, traditional financial system is quite fragile, while Bitcoin is anti-fragile. So whenever Bitcoin has an issue, it always becomes stronger. It always becomes 10 times stronger. Each time we do see a collapse in the price, it comes back 10 times stronger. Each time we do see somebody trying to attack Bitcoin or destroy Bitcoin by forking it, such as Bitcoin Cash, such as Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, Bitcoin is always becoming stronger. So this is the difference between traditional markets and crypto markets. Crypto markets are anti-fragile, uh, at least the Bitcoin markets. While uh, traditional markets, even if they get destroyed, they, they're just becoming weaker. They're not becoming stronger. It's not like the traditional markets now are stronger, more robust compared to 2008. They're not. So it is not anti-fragile. Another thing they're talking about here is the fact that, you know, these treasuries that... Um, are seen as very secure. Traditionally, they have been seen as very secure. There is an issue with them. And that is the fact that multiple parties can report that they own the very same asset. So basically, you have this issue of double spending. It's not really double spending, but you can think of it as double spending because basically several entities always report that they own the same asset. And this is so common. And you can read about this mechanic. She describes it that because uh, the auditing standards and really the auditing rules for for banks and financial institutions are made in such a way that you can hide the fact that several entities own the same asset we do see this problem that we don't even know how how many people own one single asset and how many people really see an asset as their own uh, as their own uh, ownership basically as something they own so basically this is the mechanics of this issue. Uh, she writes that here is what the books of the three parties show when a transferee, party A, sells pledge collateral to a party to a third party. So this is party C. And basically, party A has this asset, which is the treasury bond. Then you have a middleman, which is party B. Party B will borrow it and show a liability of 100. And then party C will show an asset of 100. So basically now party A and party C are, sh are showing the same asset in their in their books and party b is basically not really shown in this whole picture basically party b will be omitted from this whole picture and now both of these guys will will claim the same asset and so I mean, in reality, it all checks out. In reality, you have two people who are positive. Basically, they have a net asset and then you have one guy who has it uh, as a liability. So basically, one plus one minus one is still one. But because this is not really clear in their books, this whole picture is not clear in when you look at the auditing and when you try to audit these institutions, you, you, you don't really get this whole picture. You only see the fact that this guy owns, uh, owns the asset and this guy also owns the asset. Uh, but the fact that this guy in the middle has it as a liability, 
is not shown. So all in all, we do have a set of problems. And this problem that multiple parties can own the same treasury adds to the fact that treasuries sometimes are not seen as secure as previously. And so some banks are therefore charging more interest when it comes to these repo loans where they get the treasury as a collateral. Because, I mean, then they several people can own it. But also it is, of course, the fact that the demand for cash is so high that the interest also go up. So that was another important topic. And and obviously, it affects the crypto markets long term. For the long term, this is a topic you need to be following. Repo rates are very important to follow. Also, guys, uh, this is a collaboration we have with uh, uh, basically SF Blockchain Week. You can get 15% off if you use the link below. <clears throat> I will not be there. So just to make clear, I will not be there. But this is October 28th. If you use the link below, you get 15% off. And, and also you will be supporting the channel because we will be getting a cut from, from the ticket sales. And basically Vitalik will be there, da Don Tapscott, Olaf Carson, we will also be there. I don't really know who this guy is, but obviously Mike Novogratz, everyone knows him. Uh, Jill Carlson, not really sure who that is, not really sure who that is, but some important people will be there. Use the link to support the channel and get 15% off if you are in this place. But I personally, as you know, I will be going to Korea for Korea Blockchain Week and I'm going today. I'm going today. And then finally, I thought this was also interesting. Uh, this has nothing to do with crypto really, except for, I mean, except for the gaming aspect of it, but not really the Bitcoin markets today. This is an ad uh, from Facebook. This is an ad from Facebook where they basically show you this VR world. So you are at home having the Oculus headset and then you are in this VR world. So this is the product they are releasing, you know, quite soon which becomes pretty scary. I think it becomes very scary because if it is the case that they manage to build a digital world, you know, you and I are bouncing around in this digital world and we are enjoying their digital world that they have built for us and we become attached to this digital world that they have built for us. Well, basically they control you entirely. I mean, they literally control your world. They control your environment. So that is why I feel if we are to have these digital worlds, which with time, it's just a question of time before they become more interesting than the real world, because obviously you can do whatever you want in the digital world. You can script it however you want. You can really utilize the dopamine levels in your brain and you can create such an immersive and exciting experience, really hijacking all the neurotransmitters in your brain. I mean, just like the apps do nowadays, just like the Facebooks, the YouTubes, the Instagrams, just like they already do because obviously they try to make you as addicted as possible to their service so imagine the same thing but times a thousand because now you're actually completely immersed now you are 100 in the world and they control all your senses they control your your what you hear what you see what you feel i mean this becomes very scary soon and especially when they control the world they can ban you from this world they can allow you into this world they can restrict your access to some areas in this world so i I think if you just try to see where we're heading in VR, it is just a question of time before we live in this digital world. And although, yes, I mean, yes, today, these VR headsets are clumsy. I mean, what is this? It weighs like five kilograms and you get dizzy. And I mean, the technology is not really there, but it's just a question of time. Sooner or later, it will just be like a lens. You know, you put in a lens in your eye. So don't get confused by, uh, by new technology when it looks ugly and not practical right now. Because this is basically what no coiners and people who are anti-crypto tell about Bitcoin. <clears throat> it is the same thing. But it's just a question of time because the technology becomes very good and basically ready for mainstream adoption. I mean, obviously, the only way you can benefit from new tech trends is when you're visionary enough. Because as soon as everyone can use it, as soon as the technology is good enough so that everyone likes it, well, then there is no opportunity. There is no investment opportunity. There is really no opportunity to build companies and businesses in that industry because all the places have been taken. All the spots under the sun have already been occupied by other people. So therefore, you need to be visionary enough to see this really taking off. Taking off. And I do think we will all be living in some kind 
of such digital world. And this is where blockchain becomes more important than ever, because these digital worlds, according to me, should be for everyone. There should be global, and this infrastructure should be neutral. It's not like one company should own your world you live in and spend your, spend your days in. And, uh, you know, if you've read Ready Player One, you do understand that it, there is a good possibility that we might be living in the worlds that are that are digital and be spending most of our time there. Anyway, guys, anyway, guys, what is happening in the chat? What is happening in the chat? VR MMO RPG game with crypto as in-game currency. Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing as long as they don't do some kind of, you know, ICO where they own all the coins. This is not something good either. I mean, if somebody is to build a digital world, uh, for example, a, an MMORPG, then you need to verify so that it is actually decentralized. Because if somebody just uses smart contracts to build an application, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is decentralized. But yes, it would be amazing if we could actually do something that is viable. Uh, some of us want to see Mike Maloney. Yeah, I would love to have him. I think I wrote, I, I commented under one of his videos that it would be great to collaborate. Collaborate. I know that he also wrote to me. He also commented on my videos, like, um, in the past, but this was in 2017. So we were in touch two years ago, but I think it should be possible. It should be possible. I think he is amazing. Ivan, what are you having for breakfast? So I had a banana. That's basically it. Banana and coffee. I don't really do breakfast. I'm not really a fan of, of breakfast because I'm never hungry. Like, that's the thing. I'm never hungry in the morning. I'm like Bill Gates. <laughs> basically, Bill Gates is not uh, hungry in the morning either. And by the way, watching this documentary on Netflix now about Bill Gates, they just released... For a, from a global economic standpoint, is it better... Oops, my mistake. I, wrong button. R wrong button. I did an oopsie. I did an oopsie, guys. I wasn't meant to do that. But l l let me show you this. I think I think it is actually interesting. I, you know, I know many people don't like Bill Gates, but I think he's doing great stuff. Like, especially if you watch watch this documentary. Do they show it? Yeah, they don't really show it on uh, on here, but it's called, like, In the Mind of Bill Gates. I, I think the, it's an amazing documentary, man. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he's doing important things. Basically, they're talk talking about, like, the different projects he's doing, but also how he's thinking and also what kind of, um, biography he has. So inside Bill's brain. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing. But you know, in crypto, sometimes you, you see people hating on the guy. But yeah, I don't really agree with that. I'm not hungry in the morning after I started watching. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Many people actually use it as... Uh, as, uh, you know, breakfast background. I see sometimes people are sending me these tweets where they have good morning crypto and they're eating breakfast. Or they have good morning crypto and they are sitting with the friends and like watching in the morning. So it's, <laughs> it's really amazing. It's really amazing. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched five minutes and decided reading a book was better. This was the moral of that doc. Yeah, yeah, I mean, true, 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 true. Basically, they they show how he reads and which books he reads. And he had a book on blockchain, actually. But he's not a fan of Bitcoin, as I understand it. Uh, at least uh, right now, uh, at least right now. Who are you flying with to Korea? Which airline? Man, too many details, too many details. But I will be there in, uh, <laughs> I, will, I will be there on Friday. So uh, with who? I mean, many guys are going to be there. I know MM Crypto is going to be there. I know that Martini guy is going to be there. I know who else. Yeah, I'm sure there are many other guys that are going to be there. I'm going to meet with Kokos, you know, these gaming uh, gaming guys that I have been doing some videos with. So yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Ivan, who are your favorite comedians? To be honest with you, I haven't been watching a lot of stand-up lately. I liked, uh, like, when I watched, it was, a, like, what is his name? This this Indian guy, Russ, like, Russell Pierce, I think, yeah. I watched this guy. I don't know if he's really popular nowadays, but I watched him in 2015, approximately. Then there is this uh, Swedish guy. I mean, he's really, uh, he's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is really funny. I mean, obviously, this is only in, Swe in Swedish, but I think he he's on uh, vacation or something because he has not been doing anything since 2015. But this guy is hilarious. He has like this Swedish humor. It's, it's very nice. W where is it? Yeah, I, I don't think he's doing a lot of things nowadays. But other than that, I don't know. Who do I like more? 
I'm I'm not too into stand up. I mean, I like comedy. I like comedy. It's just that I I don't really uh, go a lot on and watch stand up or like watch stand up on on Netflix and stuff. I know people love Bill Burr. I tried to watch Bill Burr. I mean, I didn't really get into it. I didn't really get into it that much. Uh, also, there was this this guy on Netflix, like this black dude on Netflix that was quite uh, quite successful. I also tried watching him. I mean, it was a bit funny, but uh, I, I didn't really get into it either. I don't remember what his name is. Uh, but uh, let me know if you have some suggestions. I can check out if you have some suggestions. Yeah, Dave Chappelle. Yeah, that was the guy. That was the guy. I, I, I tried watching him. I didn't like him that much, to be honest with you. They don't really get into it. The same with Bill Burr, but I know these guys are huge, so so you know all all credits to them. But uh, I I don't know. I didn't think it was that funny to be honest with you. But you know on YouTube, <laughs> I have a guy on YouTube. Have you? I, I don't know why I think it's so so funny. Maybe it's because I'm like from Eastern Europe. But on YouTube, I started watching this. Like <laughs> this is so funny. Go check out Life of Boris, man. This. Th th these videos are really insane. For some reason, I got this video coding on a 15 year old computer and then like programmer. And I was like, does this guy says programmer explains because I have kind of a patent on, on programmer explains. So I, I clicked this and then I found Boris, man, this is insane content. This is insane content. If you like, you know, Eastern European stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Life of Boris. I like this is my favorite comedian right now. I, I found him la last week. I just found him last week. Very Western American style comedy. Oh, you know, I like this. I actually uh, like this uh, big dude, big Mexican dude, uh, Fluffy. Fluffy, where is he? Big Mexican dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I like him as well. I like him. But it was it was a while back. It was a while back. But I, I remember I liked him a lot, like in 2015-16. Life of Boris is fake, not actually Russian. I don't care, bro. I don't care, bro. It's funny. It's funny. But it could be Russian because he's uh, he speaks good Russian. Like, yeah, you know, I, I know it because it's my first language. So I, I can hear that he, he knows Russian. Or he just has learned the pronunciation of the words so well. But he, I, I mean, I think he's Russian, actually. I, I don't know where you have the info from, but to me, he feels Russian. Maybe he lives like in, uh, in Europe, but I think he is Russian. That's cool, bro. Lol. <laughs> nice, nice. Ivan already has his own Jamie. Correct, correct. Uh, Gabriel Iglesias, right, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Ivan, did you get a chance to look into Grudge Match Gaming produced? I haven't, I haven't. Uh, Fluffy has a Netflix, ooh, so like uh, his own series or just like a show, just like a show. I'm gonna check it out, I'm gonna check it out, check it out. Okay, guys, thank you so much for suggestions. I'm gonna go through the suggestions and check it out. Gla yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we have a Swede here. I, I don't know. I think, like, he's so funny, this this Yuan Glance guy. He He's amazing. But uh, he's not doing anything nowadays. Uh, I'm hazing out people. Yes, yes, I'm also hazing out. I'm also hazing out, guys. I'm going to Korea. Let me know if you're in Korea as well. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your... Um, what is it? Thursday. Enjoy your Thursday. And... I will not be here tomorrow because I am in Korea. I, w I have some content, like I, I don't want to tease you too much, but I have very nice content lined up for, I think, but I think I will publish it uh, um, on Monday. As you can see, I have one coin Bjorn expose scam. So basically this is a guy who has been chasing one coin and one coin, by the way, is bigger than Bitconnect because it is still running. They have been trying to shut it down for over five years. But because OneCoin is such a global scam, it is still running, and this guy has basically spent years and years and years trying to expose it and go after them. And they have threatened him, I mean, he, this guy lives under a fake address because he's being threatened. He, his, his life is under constant threat from this one coin guys and as you can see I have one hour content recorded with him so this is going to be extremely extremely good video he basically explains how he got uh, uh, information about one coin how he really got involved in exposing them and what it really meant for him so I mean yeah this is going to be amazing and this is gonna be up I think Monday I think Monday all in all guys smash the like smash the bell and I will see you 
Thanks, thanks, thanks. Happy and safe journey. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I will see you during the week, but live we're gonna be probably Monday the 6th of October. So have a great day. Man, is it so long? Is it 6th of October? Yeah, so you see, I'm gonna be in Korea. I'm gonna be back in Sweden on the 4th. Yeah, and then uh, the 7th. Yeah, Monday is the 7th of October. Yeah, the 7th of October, we will be back in the normal setting. Maybe we will do some live streams here. I mean, I'm sure if something crazy happens in the market, I... I will be, I will be uh, streaming, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see you guys. Have a great day and goodbye guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.